Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are continuing with the European Space Agency. We are at July 22nd, 1976, keeping in mind that I started in 1971. And it is my intention to just go straight into making my orbital rocket. I have decided that it takes a lot of time to build this rocket. Uh, right now we are building the Debbie and it is it takes about a year to build the Debbie. So we should just basically build our orbital rocket, which will probably take a year anyway. Maybe get some more engineers to optimize that a little bit and then get the downrange milestones and try and aim for orbit. If we can get rid of the suborbital rocket development, which is the first program that will run out, it's, uh, oh, um, I think so. I don't know, it says early rocket development here. I assume that's the suborbital rocket development section because it has downrange, downrange milestone contract here. And its deadline is, you know, by the end of the year. So I don't think we're going to be able to catch up to that. We're not going to be able to do that in time, but we'll try. I think that's our goal. Our goal is to get to orbit and then along the way we'll get the downrange contract. Okay, we're going to subassembly to Debbie. And then we're going to work on this a bit. Now we don't have to worry about recovery. 50. Well, it says 50 liters, but it's only 49.8 there. Okay, 50. So now do we have a better... Okay, we just have service module 1 still. Uh, we want to optimize the tanks if possible. We have aluminum fuselage now, and that'll be better. So for our orbital rocket, obviously, we want the better tanks, but is it that much better? Well, steel fuselage gives us 2,041 there, but we can up utilization. But what's the burn time on this little Araby? 52 seconds. Well, we certainly want more utilization then. Um, let's see. AI. No, not AI. <laughs> I'd think about AI things. Aluminum. So I was thinking of creating an upper stage with the payload, the probe core, and the nose cone fuel tank using this one kilonewton thruster. Uh, but we don't have much data on it. And it starts off with a reliability of 74.1%. So I think it might be dangerous. Now it's got a rate of burn time of 80 seconds, so it could be used here with this filled for it. Um, 80 seconds, this is a little bit longer than 80 seconds, we could underdo it a little bit, but it provided a thousand meters per second. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to use yet another Araby in the AJ-1027 configuration. And we are going to just let that burn for 11 seconds, which is sort of like one of those little SRBs that were on top of the Explorer 1, uh, you know, attached to Explorer 1. This, uh, those were six second things. This sort of in that realm. We're probably gonna have to tool things. Because we're using aluminum stringer tanks here, we're probably gonna have to tool everything from the start. We don't get any benefit for keeping it the same diameter, I don't think. Set motors. Yeah, we'll probably have to have the same arrangement. I mean, it's in space. I don't know how quickly the Araby would get unsettled in space. It probably ought not to, but it's probably safer. So the question is whether I put my main core, the one that allows us to control the rocket, on the second stage here and put the RCS on the second stage, or just dump fire both stages and put it on the third stage. I think I'll put the probe core here. Controllable mass, 25 tons, is what we're looking for. That's pretty heavy. Um, maybe I should have two separate cores. It doesn't seem like it wants to be any smaller. <laughs> okay, we'll have one core on the second stage and another core on the lower stage. Let's have it be point nine tons. Uh, 
Oh my god. Really? It's still 0.168 tons. Why do you need so much volume? Okay, this truss can't be a cone. We're gonna turn this into a cone. And we're gonna make a bigger tank. Because we have to retool it anyway. And I don't want it to be this long. We're gonna make like a mini Saturn V by the end of this. I guess once you tell it how much avionics you want, it's very clear about that. So it'll keep the size to what it needs for that kind of avionics. Which is smart. And we'll probably have RCS thrusters, so let's make that 1.2. Oh, well, we're getting 3,000 meters per second from one ton, so that's not horrible. And that's including our payload. Oh, it's still gonna be cone. Because our Debbie is bigger. We might... I mean, we're gonna retool everything for the lighter tanks, though. Here we need 25. Well, at least it doesn't need to be too much bigger. Okay, but that's not good enough. Let's see... We don't need high-pressure stringer tanks, right, engine? Well, we can't get a better version of this engine. So... I don't know about the boosters. <laughs> I mean... These were gonna be the boosters, but they look a little bit small. Well, I guess that's to 8,000, which makes me feel a little bit better, but... Now, of course, uh, we could add boosters and increase the size of the pad, but I don't know how much it's going to cost. Let's say we upgrade the pad. How much does it cost to do, like, 40 tons? It's not that bad, really. But then our minimum tonnage goes up, so... Uh, hmm... Uh, well, maybe we should just use the little radial shiny tanks. Whoa, they're big though. Spherical tanks, conventional. Oh, these don't surface attach. Well, they're useless. Well, HP aluminum stringer tanks. Modular RCS. Oh my god. Or the thrust we're getting. Oh, nicer ones. <laughs> oh, these I like. This is sort of the idea, but it's still huge. Hmm. We're using helium here. So we might as well... Can we get helium? Switch to helium. Okay. Well, it doesn't hurt our thrust that much. Shall we have some future for it? Make it a 30 ton? Well, if we're going to have to retool all the tanks anyway. Yet you... This is pretty good sea level. Hmm... It has some future to it. Lots of gimbling. Wow, reliability at zero data, 97.3%, but then this one is 779 I guess they're being written in the wrong order. That's probably just 779 Still, that's not bad. 15,000, though. But we can pick it up for now and see what we can do with it. Well, that's more like it, actually. Now, now everything's gone horribly wrong there. Um, wait, what? You have 8,775 here, and then when I put you here... That's not right. <laughs> anyway, that, that's way too heavy, though. But maybe we'll have to think about that. Maybe with future avionics, 
once we unlock avionics prototype, we can get more controllable mass from the same volume. Then we won't have to change that too much. So let's review. Okay, this is 7,562. I'm adding a thing with fuel and an engine. Here it gets me extra delta V. But if I light the core and that... Uh, okay, I think this is just a matter of that clamp, maybe? It's just because that one has a much better sea level. It's not that much better sea level ISV. I know it's less efficient than the core, but... It's not that much less efficient than the core. I mean, these are 219 sea level, 255 vacuum. The core is uh, 230, 265 vacuum. There's something screwy here. Well, anyway, it's not like we're going to use them anyway. I'm thinking about where we're going to go with this. Let's see what the burn time on... Let's see. What, I mean, 135. So... And it's not too much more than that along the way. So perhaps we want to just start off with like a Thor-like tank. Thor would be 2.44 meters. It's probably a little bit too big. I mean, it looks nice because the thrust weight ratio is very good there. I don't want it to be flat like this. Maybe I should just have a... I wish I had procedure. Where, where are my procedural interstages? Let's just have a procedural interstage there. Actually, what we're probably going to do is run it until the engine fails. Well, I mean, here, what does it say? 25 tons controllable mass. It'll be like that. Oh, here. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is the rocket I have come up with. This is the Thorish one, because it's sort of like Thor, but not quite. It's not really the same diameter. Thor was 2.44 meters. It's 2.04 meters. And we've underfueled it because of the future. Uh, we've uh, got an engine that eventually we'll upgrade to have a burn time of over two minutes. But right now, it's only got a burn time of, well, it says 65 seconds, but we'll push it a little bit. It's... Um, 81 seconds fueled right now and we'll see if that works out for us after all when it says that if you take a look at the reliability down here it says rate of burn time 100% failure at 500 seconds so once you pass the rate of burn time there's still a chance it could still work <laughs> and so we'll push that a little bit and so we have underfueled the tank I'm I'm going to turn off the resource pump. I don't think we need that. Um, maybe I'll... Hmm. Okay, so maybe instead of doing this, I'll use the utilization. But I don't know if that affects the tooling. I don't think so. So, we are underutilized for the future for this engine. And then we have a core here that allows control. And for the future, we've got... It controlling 40 tons even though we have to carry a little bit more for that and that is because of the past because <laughs> long ago with RP1 and RP0 the main pad the original pad would let you do 40 tons and then we have one of the AJ 1027s here uh, so we've got the full 52 second burn time there and that's our second stage. It's got RCS. It's helium RCS because the AJ-1027 also uses helium. And we've got extra RCS tanks because if we're using this RCS, it's going to diminish the, RCS, uh, diminish the helium for the actual AJ-1027. But just in case, we can use that helium. And then we've got another core, this one capable of controlling 1.2 tons. And so we really don't, you know, altogether we could control in theory 41.2 or whatever uh, but yes so that still has control so we can use the RCS but we're dumping the heavier core but this heavy core here which is uh, like 500 kilograms can control 40 tons this one uh, 
it weighs 180 kilograms and controls 1.2 so it's really not great to have a core like this here and I mulled that over it's yeah, it's a bit of a burden and so I'm not thrilled with it but we'll accept it as is it is possible to have the RCS down here aim the upper stages ahead of time and then fire them and there's a long time to keep everything steady we would probably want to spin stabilize it I'll think about doing that so that is on my mind but for now we'll try this out and we've got procedural fairings this time I've tried checked out the fairings and it doesn't seem like there's any benefit using one versus four so I'm using four for safety and so this is we're using high pressure aluminum stringer tanks now because we've got them we've unlocked those this one is just a regular aluminum stringer tank so much more efficient and we'll have to tool, tool everything from the start We've got one of the AJ-1027s up here. I thought about using the ORM-65, uh, but it didn't seem like a good idea because its burn time would be too long and it didn't give enough delta V. So we're using another one of the AJ-1027s just for 11 seconds to give us the final boost. And this stage, the second stage, will aim that. Oh, uh, it, didn't, it didn't have the sounding rocket. Okay, now it has the sounding rocket payload. Unfor uh, fortunately, that's not too heavy. We do have a little science score here, and that's it. So we have a science score, we've got the fuel, the nose cone is the fuel tank, and we've got the payload. Okay, strictly speaking we don't need the payload for the 3000 kilometer distance contract, but we're going to put it on since we need it for the 4500 kilometer distance contract. Okay. 6,900 is pushing it as far as what we need for the 4,500, but we do have a 2.28 thrust weight ratio at the start, which is good. So now we need to upgrade our pad for the, you know, we should upgrade the pad for the full amount. So cancel. Let me just fill this up to the brim. So do we have to scrap the Debbie first? Okay, it looks like we have to scrap the Debbie. So alright, let, let me selectively tool a few things and we'll see how it goes. We're gonna tool the avionics first. I have too many things. Purchase, oh uh, yeah, no, no. Tool avionics, purchase tooling. Okay, we'll tool this tank. Hmm. The stupid payload fairings. Now I know why I didn't want to use those. <laughs> but we should only have to tool one, right? Another avionics unit we have to tool. How much... Uh, let's say we use the old steel, uh, HP steel. How much worse is that? We wouldn't have to tool that. But I think we'll leave the top tank HP steel fuselage just so we don't have to tool it. I mean, it's costing 2,800. That's that's like nine. No, yeah, nine engineers, isn't it? Well, we'll reconsider that if it turns out this doesn't get enough distance or whatever. Okay, so having tooled everything, but decided not to change the nose tank from steel to aluminum. Uh, we still have 86,000 left and if we have all engineers available we would be able to build this in the 111 days though uh, hopefully it'll be cheaper if we underfuel it well not by that much it's like two days worth okay but full fuel we're going to have to upgrade the pad but before I upgrade the pad I need to get rid of the Debbie because it doesn't like upgrading the pad when we still have the Debbie <laughs> So fine, uh, let's scrap the Devi. Hey, we have these resources and we're gonna renovate it so that it can carry 40 tons. 40 tons. Maybe I should do 41, but okay, 62 days. Do we have any other issues? Oh, okay, renovate. Okay. So we'll have to wait on that. 
Meanwhile, let's see how much staff we can actually hire here. How's our balance? Well, we're still making 90 per day, so that's nice. We've got some science, actually. Let's not even look at that right now. <laughs> I don't know how many we can use. Probably that's already too many. It still says the same change in funds, though if I've hired so many people, shouldn't I... Shouldn't their wages have diminished how much I am making? Okay, so now we can assign staff to it. 160 max. Okay, so we can hire a few more engineers. Okay. Wow, we're getting even more funds. I, d I don't even understand. Um, I just hired a bunch of people and I'm getting more than I used to. It's all a mystery. Okay, anyway, I guess it's time to build it. Okay, 30 tons is... so we'll only fuel it to 30 tons. What? Does it have to be the exact amount? Can't we have at least that much? It doesn't like to have more propellant in the GSE? I don't understand. I only underfueled it. Why can't it deal with that? Yeah, it says okay as long as I'm fully utilized. Yeah, it's it's only saying okay is no when I under supply this tank. But the pad should have all the propellant it needs. I'm only using less ethanol and liquid oxygen. It shouldn't need the exact amount. That's not realistic, game. Okay, well, the renovate cost is 18. We'll take four extra days. Fine, four days, renovate. <sighs> we have to renovate it because we're underfueling it. Don't tell me I have to reassign the staff to it again. I have to reassign the staff to it again. Click, 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 click. Uh, we'd finish the Thorish one only 10 days after the deadline passes. I wonder what our, how our funding's gonna be when that happens. Well, we still seem to be getting money. But maybe it's a little bit late on that. Uh, they finished it early? Did they finish it early? Because it's only January 1st. I thought they said it would be finished on January, January 10th. Did they get to finish things early? Rollout's five days. But that's not as bad as the 14 days we used to have for the Debbie. So we should get some research happening. But what about the avionics? Avionics prototype. Let's just make those lighter. The lighter those are, the nicer things will be. So then it's just, we're gonna have to wait on orbital rocketry until we get this anyway, so. Okay, it is January 6th. Um, for some reason we're still getting funding even though we passed the deadline for their early rocket development and we should in theory be getting less. I don't know, the curve for this doesn't go up to compensate for that. Oh, I guess the deadline has a drop-off, but then there's a trail-off. Oh, okay. There's a trail-off on funding, I suppose. But it doesn't tell me numbers here on this chart. <laughs> so it's complicated. This one, all I need to do is first advanced biological suborbital experiment. But it's got time, so I don't feel too bad about it. So, throttle up. SAS on. Here we go with the Thorish. Ignition. And go. We are aiming for downrange distance. Looking good so far. We should be through max Q. Uh, no, we, uh, yes, we want that. Okay. 
separation. Uh, I've got to turn this off for a sec. I don't want to use too much helium, so I'm manually doing it. All right, we're all back up, and okay, second stage is ignited. Okay. I think we'll just go ahead. Oh, I tilted down. The spin stabilization wasn't good enough. I think the two little SRBs use different amounts. Look, this one at 0.16, this one 0.2. That probably was what tilted it. Well, at least it didn't take very long. All right. Back to Space Center. I'm thinking about just removing the sounding rocket payload for now. Since that's not relevant to the contract. Okay. We'll do that. This, the bomb engine basically lasted the whole time. Uh, let me build another one. You better not make me retool that thing. You're making me retool that thing. Okay. Well, now we have marginally more delta V, I guess. Do we? Did that actually make things better or worse? <laughs> Still making monies. What I really need to keep an eye on is the helium quantity. When we get around to using the RCS, we can't go below 12,356. So... Otherwise, I can spin up more than I did last time. Alright, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. Oop, it works. And launch. I'll try a somewhat steeper trajectory this time. Okay, coasting. Okay, separating. What's the max here again? 12,300. Okay. Alright. Well, it lit. We're a little bit off though. I guess the SRBs are always going to be a little bit tilted. Or a little bit... having a little bit of a differential in thrust. Causing us to be a little bit off. It's not wonderful. Maybe we shouldn't have Separatrons there and we can do without them, I don't know. Yeah, we're too short. Whoops. Yeah, it deviates. You might want to do without the SRVs on that stage. Well, it mostly stayed forward this time. Well, there's... Uh, 3,000 kilometers and this 4,500 and we don't even have the payload this time. Okay, we reached 3,000, but it doesn't track it past that. So I don't know if we would get to 4,500. And we're not carrying the sounding rocket payload anyway, so we need to optimize this somewhat.